were in church in the 80s or 90s, you understand the term, I'm full. Those of you who've been saved in 2000s, you may not get it. It means I am overwhelmed to be here this morning. I remember when y'all first got this church. I believe I preached that opening, that, that opening service, the first service in this church. I was so honored. I've been along for the journey. Remember spirit and truth. Remember cleaners down the block. I remember New Rock, the, 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 the theater. I don't know how you did all of that. That was some amazing stuff. I remember the difficulties and the struggles. As we've gathered here today to celebrate 28 years. Anything that you've done for 28 years needs to be celebrated. <laughs> 28 years of living. 28 years at a job, working. 28 years of pastor. 28 years of preparing sermons 28 years of study 28 years of getting up and preaching sermons no matter how you felt that's 28 years of travel they think traveling is fun because they don't have to be on the plane and be in the airport and be that's 28 years of encouraging people when you were discouraged that's 20 years of helping people who then turned around and left you. That's 28 years of pouring into people who when you, after all you've done for them, you, do, you say one or two things they don't like and they tell you, I feel the Lord's calling me somewhere else. 28 years of being disappointed by people you have served. 28 years of tears that they didn't get to see because you couldn't bleed on the people that were still there being hurt by the people that you helped who have left you. 28 years. 28 years of having to believe God for money when you had to refurbish or you had to buy or you had to, 28 years of stretching your faith further than you could have ever imagined. See, they see us up here talking, they see us up here preaching, but they don't know. 28 years of saying, God, do you know what you're doing? And 28 years later, you're still here. You still got your right mind, and you didn't kill nobody. As long as, as far as I know, you haven't killed nobody. Not yet. Okay, 28 years of trusting God when you couldn't see God. 28 years of saying, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Come on, put your hands together for that. 28 years. I applaud you, sir. I applaud you, ma'am. Put your hands together for these two giants of the faith. 28 years of serving God, serving you, serving the kingdom. Come on, put your hands together a little bit more. I want to applaud you and I want to celebrate this church. Those of you that are here, those of you that are watching, I want to celebrate this church for what you have done. I want to celebrate everyone who has walked with them, everyone who has supported them, wherever you came along the journey. I want to celebrate every leader, every member, every supporter who has held up their hands and prayed for them and brought them food and given them an encouraging word and gave them a gift or did anything to help them along these 28 years. Give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand. 
I, I, re I remember the journey. I remember the journey. It's been a long journey. We've shared so much. I'm, I'm fighting back tears. I really am. Because this is nothing short of a miracle of God. Finding two people who surrendered to God. And, and, and here's what they don't understand. You got to keep surrendering. <laughs> when you lead like this, your first yes is not your last yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the last yes you gave is still not your last yes. Because when you lead like this, it is a constant, Lord, I don't want to do this. But okay, we support you. We applaud you. We support and applaud all of you that are here, all of you. What camera I All of you that are watching, we support the, the work that God has done here at Generation Church. Put your hands together one more time. I, I have one thing to say that we can go to the Word, and, and, and I'm going to break the rules. I, don't, I normally follow the rules in the house, but y'all going to have to start that clock again because I haven't started preaching yet. So you're going to start that clock again. Um, there's one thing I want to, assignment I want to give. I don't know who this is for, but it's for somebody. So they told you uh, that 10 years ago in, in, in 2012, August 4th, 2012, I consecrated him. And with all this going on in the pandemic, we haven't celebrated the 10-year anniversary. So I'm commissioning somebody. August of 2023, I want a banquet for him. I want, a, I want an Episcopal banquet for him. So I need a team to come together and start planning it. Call, call Maria. We'll work out the details. If you don't know, we, we, I, want, I want an Episcopal banquet. He'll never call it for himself. He will never do that. He's like, yeah, I will. Yeah. Who's going to do back, you, I got you back there? Okay. I need a team to pull it together. I want an Episcopal banquet for him in 2023. And yes, I will be the speaker. We were talking about it upstairs. He said, well, maybe I'll do, do something for my 20th anniversary. The devil is a liar. We are not waiting another nine years to celebrate this great man of God and all the people he has touched and he has influenced. So mark your calendars. August of next year. I don't know where. So, yeah, y'all got some fancy places up here. You know, y'all y'all up in the ritzy part. So so, so I want we're going to do something great. It's going to be grand. Don't listen to him because he's going to tell you, oh, no, 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 no. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm his consecrating bishop. I'm telling you, I want it grand. I want it wonderful. Invite everybody, and we're going to celebrate and have a great time celebrating this great man and woman of God. Put your hands together. Amen. All right. Woo! Get your Bibles. We're going to the book of, of Deuteronomy. I will, I will tell you this. Um, unless I tell you this, you wouldn't know. Um, my, my, my daughter is leaving for California tomorrow. She's moving to California, and today is her last service at the church. And if it was anybody else but Raymond, I would not be here today. But I love and appreciate Ray and Sherry, and I am here because I want to give a word to them and to this church. Get your Bibles, go to the book of Deuteronomy, and I'm going to read real fast. Chapter, chapter 2, chapter 2, and I'm going to read it real fast. Start that clock again. Y'all Y'all ain't listening to me yet. Start, go back to, and don't, actually don't start the clock till I finish reading the scripture. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For you young preachers, when you come up, you can't do that. I'm the bishop. You, you haven't earned that right yet. If you just do exactly what they tell you, if they, but, but since, you know. Deuteronomy chapter 2, beginning at verse 1 through verse 7, when you have it, say amen. I'm going to move quickly. Then uh, we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, and the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward, and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in, Mount, in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore meddle not with them, for I will not 
give you their land. No, not so much as a foot's breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Ye shall buy meat of them for money, and ye shall eat. And ye shall also buy water of them for money, that ye may drink. Verse 7. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hands. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness these forty years. The Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. The Lord has been with you. You have lacked nothing. For a few moments, I want to speak to you from the subject... <laughs> From the subject, more to do, farther to go. Say more to do, farther to go. Bless this word in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Very quickly, I'm going to run through this. So, one of the things that happens when you get older is you get experiences. Age gives you experiences and experiences give you stories. If I was to ask you, what are the top three stories of your life, what would you say? What are three things that stand out in your life that as you're sitting around, you can talk about stories of things that have happened in your life? I, I have a few. I'll, I'll give you a couple. When I was 23 years old, my friend threw me a surprise party. And uh, I was at the party and I was smiling. And I was having a wonderful time outwardly, but inwardly, I felt like a failure. Because at 23 years old, I thought I had failed God and that there would be nothing good coming out of my life. Now, looking back on that, now I'm 60 years old. Looking back on that, you think, boy, you were crazy. But so many of us can look back at moments of our life and perchance there's somebody who is here today or watching today and the devil is whispering to you, you ain't never going to be nothing. I want to tell you that devil is a lie. Somebody pointed at somebody and said, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. I remember when I started my church, uh, I, I had thought that God was going to bless me with a big building when I started, and I'd been praying for God and fasting and asking God to give me a, a nice church building. I'd written letters to everybody, and, and God said, no, you're going to start your church in your living room. I remember being embarrassed having to start the church in the living room, cleared out all of the furniture in the, the, the living room was the sanctuary. We, we took out the dining room table and chairs. That was my overflow room. I had big dreams. And the stairs were the balcony. I, am I telling the truth? Y'all were there. So I had, a, I had a main sanctuary. I had an overflow room. And I had a balcony. And from, from, my, from my house, the things that God has done, and the devil was whispering to me when I was opening up the church, what kind of preacher are you? What kind of man of God are you that God didn't give you a church? You don't even know what you're doing. You ain't going nowhere. A few years later, look at what the Lord has done. I say that to say we all have stories. Now, here's the thing that the, that the younger generation doesn't understand. What you Google for information we experienced. There is a difference between information and experience. I remember the 80s. Some of y'all remember it too. I remember the 90s. Stuff that you could just go online and look up. And yeah, I, rem I remember the Jackson 5. I remember when Michael broke away and, and at that Motown night. Remember that Motown when he came out and did Billie Jean for the first time? I remember the world going crazy because we had never seen anybody moonwalk. So what young people just Google for information, we've experienced. I say that to say that because that's what's going on in our text. In Deuteronomy, very few Christians read Deuteronomy because Deuteronomy is known theologically as the second giving of the law. And because people have read the law in Exodus, they figure we don't need to read Deuteronomy again. But you have to understand something. In Deuteronomy, Moses, he's older, he's about to go off the scene, and he is recounting for the children of Israel what God has done over the last 40 years. Here's what you must understand. The people to whom he is talking in Deuteronomy are not the people he was talking to in Exodus. Because the people in Deuteronomy were children when they came out of Israel. 
most of them were not even born. So what they're hearing uh, as, as information, Moses has gone through. If you know the story of the children of Israel, when they came out because of the rebellion of the ten spies who said, we cannot conquer the land, but God said, everybody over the age of 20 is going to die in the wilderness. And they walked around for 40 years and people died in the wilderness and the children, the, the adults said, listen, what you brought us out to kill our children? God said, I'm going to take care of the children. Don't worry about yourself. Are you with me? So Moses is talking to a generation that has heard of the Red Sea, that has heard of Mount Sinai, but they did not experience it. And there's a difference between those who just hear it and those who have experienced it. It's like, Bishop, those who've come into this church now in the last few years, and, and they hear the stories of coming in here and having to read. By the way, the sanctuary is gorgeous. I love what you've done with the place. Uh, uh, they, they, but, but they weren't here. You know, there, there are people who join your church after the struggle. Uh, we just celebrated an anniversary at our church, and, and I, I challenge people who, who, when they came into the church, the sanctuary was already built. The carpet was already laid. The chairs were, you didn't have to sacrifice your vacation money because somebody else did. Because when you're building a church, those that are committed have to sacrifice it. And, and, and I'm not going to buy a car this year. I'm going to give that money to the church. I, I'm not going to go on vacation. See, it's quiet because people don't understand that. Because, you know, when we were in, in, in building funds, we know what it's like to sacrifice for the church. But there are people that come in afterwards and everything is paid and the lights are on, the cameras, everything, and they just enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. But you need to know somebody sacrificed for you to be able to put your hiney parts on that chair on which you sit. Somebody say amen. So Moses is talking to people who were not there or who were little children at the crossing of the Red Sea, who were little children when he spoke and the water came out of the rock. And he's reminding them, somebody paid a price for you. And I want to tell this church, as we celebrate our 20th anniversary and celebrate what God has done, uh, wherever you came in along the line, somebody sacrificed for you. Before you got here, somebody had to be paying tithes and offerings. Somebody had to be serving and cleaning and doing the things necessary so you could come in and say, oh, what a lovely church. I like this church. I want to be a part of it. Wonderful. But now that you're here, somebody sacrificed to give you the comfort that you have. You now have a responsibility to sacrifice for those that are coming after. Somebody say amen. Somebody say more to do, farther to go. Now, please understand, by the time uh, Moses is writing this, they've had 40 years of experiences, 40 years of struggles, 40 years of successes, 28 years of struggles, 28 years of successes. But Moses says, as good as God has been, I don't want you to be comfortable because there's more to do farther to go. Somebody say, more to do, farther to go. So he tells them, he says, listen, I want you, you've been encircling this mountain long enough. In other words, it's time to make a shift. Somebody say, shift. I'm talking both corporately and in, 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 in individually. I want you to know that God has set you up at this time for a shift into what's next. Because as good as God has been and as much as you might have accomplished to this point, hear the word of the Lord, there's a shift in the atmosphere. God has sent me to announce, no, not to announce, to undergird and to confirm what's in your bishop's spirit. That, that as good as it has been, there are more things we have to do. We thank God for everything he's done. We thank God for every blessing. But there is a, somebody say shift. So he says, I want you, I want you to stop circling this thing and move on to what's next for you. Because God has something next for you. I want to tell somebody, you haven't laughed your best laugh yet. I want to tell somebody, you haven't experienced your best experience yet. I want to tell somebody that the devil's been whispering to you and saying life is over. No, baby, life's not over. I'm just making a shift. 
Ah, I, life is not over. I'm just making a shift. What's the shift? I'm going from where I've been to what God has for me next. Is there anybody in here or anybody watching who will say, Bishop, that word is for me. That's, that's bearing witness in my spirit. I, I, I'm thankful for what's come, but I'm looking forward. I, I want to tell somebody, not, not only is it a shift, I'm speaking to this church that you're going into a new era. There is a difference between seasons and eras. Michael Jordan played for 15 seasons in the NBA. Once he retired, the Jordan era was over. Magic Johnson played for 13 seasons in the NBA. Once he retired, the, the Magic Johnson era was over. Lawrence Taylor. Played for the Giants. And he was a wrecker on the defense. How they doing? Are, are they doing good today? I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They're doing all right? All right. Good, good. I know, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, don't, Bishop, don't check. Don't check. No, no, no. It's all right. <laughs> but once Lawrence Taylor retired, the Lawrence Taylor era was over. Please understand, you have seasons and then you have errors. When God is getting ready to move you to another place, he shifts you out of season into a brand new era. I came to tell generations you're in a brand new era. One of the ways you know that is that Bishop has changed the name of the church from FCC to generations. Why? It's a shift into a new. See, an era is made up of seasons. And I came to tell you that God has shifted your era and you're going to begin to enjoy seasons of success, seasons of breakthrough, seasons of turnaround, seasons of God doing for you, exceeding and abundantly what you can ask or think. Is there anybody in here who will say, Bishop, I'm going to receive that word. I'm going to be the one that believes that God is shifting my era. I'm in a brand new era and God is doing breakthrough brand new things. It's not just a new season. It's a brand new era and I'm rejoicing in the things that God is about to do. Somebody give God praise right there. Hallelujah. Somebody shout new era. It's not just a new season. It's a new era because God wants to show you I got more power. Ah, the power you needed in the last era, you don't need it now. Now you need more power. The, the blessings you need in this era are different from what you need in the past era. Because when I shift errors, I shift purpose and I give new gifts. Do you not know uh, in the era in which he played basketball, Michael Jordan was rich and he was a millionaire. But in this new era, he's a billionaire. Somebody take your finger, put your chest, say, God's about to prosper me. God's about to prosper me. Yeah, yeah. In this new era, God is about to prosper you. Ah, I see. He's going to give you houses that you did not build and, and vineyards that you did not plant. He's going to give you clothing that you did not weave. I, I came to announce to somebody, God's getting ready to blow your mind. God's getting ready to blow your mind. God's getting ready to blow your if you believe it, open your mouth and give him a shout of praise. Yeah! Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. And here's why you have to be, to, be, to be keyed into this. Verse 7 says, for the Lord your God has blessed you. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I've been blessed, I've been blessed, I've been blessed. I, it, it doesn't mean I haven't gone through some stuff. I've gone through some things, but I've been blessed. As a matter of fact, not only have I been blessed, I is blessed. I know it's supposed to be am, but, but I feel I is blessed. I, I is blessed. I, I am walking in blessing. I got issues, but I'm blessed. I, I got some problems, but I got some debts, but I'm still blessed. I'm blessed and highly favored. 
I, I want you to understand I'm blessed when I go out uh, and I'm blessed when I come in. Uh, I'm blessed when I lay down uh, and I'm blessed when I rise up. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field uh, and whatever I put my hands to, I am blessed. Don't get mad at me because I'm blessed. Don't get mad at me because I'm walking in the blessing of the Lord. Don't get mad at me because I know that the Lord is with me and the Lord is on my side. And that no matter what the devil puts in front of me, I am. Woo! I'm blessed. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Uh -huh. He says, for the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. When the devil tells you, you are, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The Lord has blessed thee and the words of thy hand. Look, we've got to move on. He says, and he knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. Oh, my goodness. God knows every step you've taken in your wilderness experience. Because the truth be told, all of us have had a wilderness experience. But here is the good news. For those who, who are in the middle of your wilderness experience, the Lord is with you. For, for, for those of you who are walking through your wilderness experience, hear the word of the Lord. I am. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you because I am not going to allow you to walk through your wilderness by yourself. If I was to do that, you'd get lost. If I was to do that, you would not make it out. As a matter of fact, y'all know in the wilderness is where God showed off his power. It was in the wilderness that a pillar of cloud led them by day and a pillar of fire led them by night because they would not have been able to get out of the wilderness without the leading of the Lord. Hear what God is saying to you. I'm leading you in your wilderness. I'm leading you through your wilderness and I'm going to lead you out of your will. Don't give up in the wilderness. Don't quit in the wilderness because I, I know the way out, says the Lord. I know the way out of your trouble. Huh? I know the way out of your problem. Somebody say, yes, Lord. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Calm, calm down, Douglas. You know what it is? I haven't been here in so long. And I'm, I'm getting too excited. I'm almost finished. He says, first of all, I bless you. Second of all, I'm with you. I'm walking through the wilderness with you. So I look up and say, thank you, Lord. Every time the devil says, you're by yourself. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. See, there, see, there, there are three things the devil tries to do. First of all, he tries to tell you that you're alone. Come on, tell the truth. He tells you you're the only one going through this. You're the only one dealing with this. And he messes with you at night. He messes with you that you're the only one. The second thing he says, no one cares. He tells you no one cares. And the third thing he says is, it's never going to get better. But I came to announce to this church and to anyone who is watching, the devil is a liar. <laughs> He lied when he said you were all by yourself. He lied when he said nobody cares. And he lied when he said you're not coming. I'm coming out of this. God is going to open up the door. God is going to make a way. God's going to turn my captivity captive and all the stuff that's not working. Watch the Lord do it because the Lord, my God, is in control. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Somebody shout it. Yeah. All right, sit down, sit down. Uh, I'm blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Second thing is, even when I'm walking through the wilderness, he's with me. Say, he's with me. And here's the thing that's blessed me. He says, he says, he says, thy God hath been with thee. And then the last clause says, thou hast lacked. You've lost some things, but you've lacked nothing. You've lost some people, but you've lacked nothing. Some people left you and thought, when I leave, the church is going to go down. When I take my tithes, the church won't have enough money. When I take my talent, who's going to do this now? And the Lord said, bye-bye. 
Because you could have lost people, but you lost nothing. And I came to tell you that people in your life who thought if they walked out the door, you would not survive. But hear the word of the Lord. You lacked nothing. I've gone through a season of loss, but I've lacked nothing. I've gone through a season of pain, but I've lacked nothing. I, hey, I don't have everything, but I've lacked nothing. I want to say that again. I don't have everything, but I've lacked. Do I have anybody in this church who will say, Bishop, you're talking to me. The devil took some stuff, but I've lacked nothing. God stayed with me. I lack nothing. In spite of all the hell I've been through, I lack I need some praise from some people who will say, I've lost some things, but I still lack Give God a praise right there. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. I've lacked nothing. The devil tried to take stuff, but I've lacked It's been hard sometimes, but I've lacked. I had to cry sometimes, but I've lacked. It hurt my heart, but I've lacked. And God's not through yet, so I'm still holding on because I've lacked. Shout it! Shout it! Shout it! I'm finished. I'm finished. Stand, stand to your feet if you can stand. And so I came by to tell this church, to tell this pastor, tell this leadership. Moses says it's been 40 years, 28 years for you. I've been with you all this time. You've lost, but you've not lacked. God, that's a, that's a, I need to write a book about that. You've lost, but you've not lacked. They talked about you like a dog and said, what's Mark doing now? Eh, eh. But he, you've not lacked. Church is closing the, the pandemic. You've not lacked. 28 years of not knowing what God was going to do or how God was leading you, but you've not lacked. People broke your heart. But you've not lacked. People walked out the door, walked out of your life. But you've not lacked. And Moses says to this, listen to me, to these children who are now adults. Now remember now, anybody, in, everybody under 30, which I'm talking about you. Okay? They, they, they heard some of the stories of their parents. But now they were living their own experiences. And Moses said, God brought you out. You wander around the wilderness. You have to have your wilderness experience. You got to go through pain. You got to go through heartache. You got to develop your muscles to trust God. If you can't trust Him when you're young, what are you going to do when you get older? You got to go through it. But while you went through it, you lack nothing. You know why? Because the Lord was with you. Hey, God. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then He says, then He says. He says, here's what you got to hold on to. Why? Because, listen to me, generations, because there's more to do and farther to go. He says, God's been good, but you're still only on the verge of the promised land. Hold up. Hey, as good as God has been, and as much as God has done, and the miracles he's performed. You know, in, in the wilderness, the Bible says, their shoes never got old. Their clothing never got old. God took care of them. Why? Because they lacked. They didn't have to farm nothing because every day, matter. Woo. Every night, the quail would come. They, in the wilderness, they ate better than kings and queens because they lacked. Some of y'all can look back at times of a struggle and, 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 and you didn't lose weight. You gained weight in the struggle.
You got a new car in the struggle. You in the mall shopping every month in the struggle. You lacked. And Moses is saying to them, as good as God has been, you still have not yet stepped into the promised land. You still haven't stepped in what he promised your parents 40 years ago. You've been lacking nothing, but you still haven't even stepped into the promise. Listen to me, church. Bishop, as good as God has been, you still have not stepped. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. You ain't seen nothing yet. Tell your neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait, what's going to look like when you step into the promised land? When you, the land flowing with milk? The land that God had has reserved. Somebody in here, the devil's been telling you, you're not going to make it to the next place. But I'm here to tell you, 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 the devil's a liar. You're about to step. If you, if, if you have the faith to believe it, I want you to do a spiritual exercise. If you have the faith to believe it, I need somebody who knows I'm stepping from lacking nothing into the promised land. Take a step. Take a step. Just take a step. 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 Take a step, take a step. I'm stepping, I'm stepping, I'm stepping to say I'm going from where I've been. I'm stepping into the promise. I'm walking, I'm stepping, I'm moving into the promise. God's been good, but God's about to get better. I'm stepping, I'm stepping, I'm stepping. Yeah! I gotta go. I gotta go. As good as God's been in the wilderness, I lack nothing in the wilderness. But if I lack nothing in the wilderness, can you imagine what my life's gonna be like in the promised land? Can you imagine? Whoa, whoa, wait. Can you imagine what your life is going to look like in the next era of your life? Can you see yourself in the future? Can you see yourself walking in a blessing that you cannot even imagine? If you can see it, throw up your hand and say it. So, I stopped by on this 28th anniversary to tell you there's more to do, farther to go. Come a long way, God knows you have. There were days we weren't sure the children were going to make it. Who's going to come? Is, it, is my vision ever going to come to pass? But God's been with us. But we're shifting seasons, stepping into new eras. And in this new era, I'm going from the wilderness to the promised land. And the promises God has made me for the promised land will make the blessings of the wilderness look inconsequential. Y'all didn't hear me. I said the blessings of the promised land are going to make the blessings in the wilderness seem inconsequential consequential. It's going to make the blessings that you think are so big seem so small because God's getting ready to open the windows of heaven and to pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough to if you believe it, throw up your hands and give God